Okay, uh, hey guys, it's me, Saran, back with another video. I am filming on my computer and iPad right now because I'm not sure which one's going to work. So I'm filming both at the same time. My iPad is kind of going to be my backup in case my computer, uh, you know, acts crazy. So if you guys see me kind of like looking back and forth, back and forth, it's probably because I'm going back and forth between the computer and the iPad. Um, so yeah, a lot of you, this is going to be a video that a lot of you have been asking for, a lot of you have been requesting. Um, it's basically going to be a video about how to deal with coons. <laughs> um, a lot of people have been requesting this video. My first request for this video actually probably came months ago from a Tumblr user named Battalioning. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your Tumblr name right. Um, and they, they sent me a private, you know, post about, you know, just dealing with black friends that are anti-black. Um, you know, black friends that basically, you know, throw other black people under the bus. Black people that want to be the cool black person, the understanding black person, you know, the model minority, you know, the black person that says, well, I'm black and I think it's fine, you know, that, that type of person. And you're know, asking me, how do you deal with that type of thing? And recently I've also been getting, I've gotten quite a few other requests on Tumblr for me to make um, a similar kind of video. Another Tumblr user, I believe his name is Black Boy Fly. I'll include the links to, to these Tumblr so you guys can check them out. Ask me something similar, you know. Oh, how do you deal with, you know, anti-black black black people? How do you deal with all lives matter type of black people? You know, and basically what you guys are asking me is, how do you deal with coons? How do you deal with a fucking coon? I don't like to engage with coons. Just like I don't like to engage with racist white people. I feel like it is a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. It's not productive. You're not doing anything. You're not accomplishing anything by arguing with these people. And it's funny because I've, I've been thinking all week about how am I gonna get, make this video and how am I gonna get this video up. And the universe sent me this morning, just like I always say, whenever I wait, on a video instead of just making it whenever I wait I always end up like receiving something from the universe that like helps me in making my video the universe sent me a coon this morning to my Instagram account I normally don't engage with coons as I just said but I ended up engaging with this person because this is a person who's who I recognized um this is a mutual she followed me I followed her I had actually engaged with her on Instagram before so I was not expecting her to be a coon. I was actually really surprised by the way the conversation went. I had put put a post, and you guys can see our whole conversation. She blocked me, and I blocked her, but the conversation's still there if you guys want to read it. Um, I had put up a post that said, you know, a repost. I propose that Monday, May 4th through Monday, May 11th, 2015, we don't spend any money at white-owned businesses. Towson, The Harbor, Caton... Horseshoe, White Marsh, Bells Point, and etc. Let's see if they hear us then. Please share this post. We must stand together. So basically, they're calling for an economic boycott, which you guys know I've been saying for how long? Months now? Months? Since the new year? I've been making Black Friday videos. You guys know I've been saying this. Group economics. So I reposted it and I said, I propose that we make this boycott permanent. Why was there a cat put on that? May well, May 4th through May 11th or, or whatever you know I think maybe that's what Memorial Day I don't, I don't know but I'm assuming it's it's I'm assuming those dates mean something why put a cap on it so we're gonna boycott for a few days and then go right back to giving our money away to white people that's silly to me that doesn't make any sense stop stop period research black owned businesses in your community and support them and give your money to them it's it's easy it's very easy it's, it's a very easy concept you don't have to have a cap on it to make it easier or more understandable or anything like that. You know, you support black-owned businesses, you buy from black-owned businesses, that's it, the end, period. Um, especially in these state. I mean, it's every state. It's every state, but especially in these high-profile states where we're seeing these high-profile cases. Maryland, 
Missouri, um, North Carolina, you know, places like New York, of course. If you want to make those your model states, then that's fine. Those can be our model states that we, you know, model ourselves after. But we should all be doing it. We should all be utilizing group economics. We should all be boycotting, you know. Oh, let's boycott and let's see if they hear us then. But let's only boycott through May 4th through the 11th because after 11th, I got to, like, go back to Towson and pick something up, you know. Um... So I posted that on Instagram, and this girl replied. And basically, she was just like, oh, yeah, I agree. The conversation started out good. The conversation started out good. She was basically like, oh, yeah, you know, I agree that we need to boycott. We need to boycott white-owned businesses, you know, and, like, year-round, me and my husband and my son, we only support, you know, local businesses, small businesses, you know, and black-owned businesses in the neighborhood, I was like, that's great. That's awesome. You know, I totally agree. I think that we should definitely, definitely be boycotting these white-owned businesses and these corporations. Um, you, you guys know me. I'm, I'm pretty anti-capitalism. So even if you don't support a black-owned business, just a small, a small business, a local business, a business that's owned by a woman, you know, something to show these big corporations that they don't have us by the throat anymore. Um, which is extremely difficult because everything has become so monopolized that, he, that these huge corporations own everything. But that's a different video for a different day. Um, but basically, I, I was like, yeah, you know, this, this shouldn't be just a one-time thing. This should be something that we all practice all the time, you know, group, group economics. Um, and then she just derailed. She just went left. She went motherfucking left with the conversation. And she goes, yeah... You know, because black people are so obsessed with labels and black people this and black people that and black. She wrote a whole paragraph bashing black people, black, black woman, black lady. She wrote a whole paragraph bashing black people. And you go to the hood and everybody in the hood is broke. They all broke. They don't have no money, but they got the newest Jordans on and they got the 30 inch weave and they got the Louis Vuitton bag. You see a whole bunch of rich broke people walking around. If you go to the trailer park with the white people, you don't see the white people doing that. Oh, stop on my iPad too. Stop. Stop right there. Right there, we're getting into white supremacist territory, right? When you go to the white neighborhoods, when you go to the white trailer park, oh, the white people are not doing that. When you go to the black neighborhoods, when you go to the hood, oh, the black people are doing this. Black people are wrong and the white people are right. Like, okay, they're fucking, they're not wearing Jordans and weave in, in the trailer park, but they're smoking meth. They're probably smoking dope. They're probably spending all their money on hardcore heavy drugs. Like, you know, it's just a di it's a difference. It's a difference. One, it's a difference. It's a cultural difference. Yes, it is a cultural difference. And two, I, I replied to her. I was like, well, you know, I'm not talking about bashing black people. All I'm talking about is group economics and supporting each other. I was like, that's one. I was like, and two, you can't really make the comparison between white trailer parks and black ghettos. I was like, because for one... There are certain systems in place within the ghetto, right, to keep black people down. There are certain, what do I want to say, things, shops, stores, material goods that are marketed specifically towards black people that are not marketed to another race. I was like, if you go to the trailer park, yes, you don't see them walking around in Jordans, but you also don't see any foot lockers. You don't see any shoe stores. You don't see any weave shops. You don't see any nail shops. You don't see those things in the trailer park. How come the Asians and the Arabs and everybody else, they move into the hood and they open those shops up in the hood so that they can take the money from the black people and they can take that money back to their community and they can enrich their community. That doesn't have nothing to do with the black people that are in the community. That has to do with those other races that are leeches, that are leeching off the black community. If they moved into the trailer park and they opened up those industries in the trailer park, I'm pretty sure you would see white people in the trailer park walking around with Jordans and fucking getting their nails done. Because everybody fucking go get, goes and gets their nails done. When I go get my nails done, it's all, diff it's all different types of people in there. Black people, white people. Asians, Hispanics, let's not make this in one, let's not make this into a black thing. And two, let's not remove the context 
Let's not remove the systems that are in place. Let's not forget the ghetto as a concept was created, right? The ghetto didn't just naturally fucking arise out of nowhere. It didn't just spring into being like fucking... I always say spontaneous combustion, but that is not the phrase. Like the Big Bang Theory, spontaneous production? Whatever. You know, these are all... These are all things that are caused by systems, right? As I always say, none of this, none of what's happening exists within a vacuum. None of these are individual incidents. They're all part of a system at work and a system that is at play. The ghetto, the original ghetto, was created for the Jews. It was created, okay? And then it was, you know, adapted for black people in America, it was originally built by the Jews for, for, I'm sorry, by the Germans for the Jews, right, during the Holocaust and post-Holocaust. That concept of a ghetto was adapted for black Americans, right? And then you had redlining, and dis which a lot of people seem not to know about, and I feel like I've been talking about redlining a lot, so I might make a video on redlining, but you ended up with all these systems, systems, laws, government, you know, agencies and institutions that and reinforce these, that pushed black people into these areas, that pushed black people into these communities, and that kept us there. And then through the, through the system of racism, white supremacy, taught us that anything white was better, that white neighborhoods were better, that we live in the ghetto, and the ghetto was bad, and the white neighborhoods are good, and what you have to do when you get money is to take your money out of your community and out of the ghetto and out of the hood and put it into a white community, right? Give your money to white people. Put your money in the white community. Put your If you're not putting your money into white businesses, but you're, you're putting your money into white community, you're still a part of the system. Because this woman went on to, she got very upset, which let me know I was hitting a nerve, because when you're calm and people are getting very upset and defensive, that means you're striking a nerve. You're, you're, you're getting to them. She went off on a tangent, you know? Oh, no, no, no. Context doesn't matter. The systems don't matter, right? I live in Ferguson. I live in a suburb of Ferguson. Me and my husband, we make sure that our son has the best everything. Our son plays hockey. Our son is in martial arts. Our son does this, this, and this. We don't wear Jordans. We don't buy weave. We don't spend our money on X, Y, and Z. So now we're getting into this elitist, coon mentality of we're black and we got out the hood. That makes us better than those hood rats living in the hood. We know better. Black elitism. We're smart. We're educated. She went on to start talking about her degree. And I have a degree in this. And I have a degree in that. And I have a degree in African studies. You have a whole degree in African studies and you're still a coon. You have a whole degree in African studies and you're still ignorant. You have a whole degree in African studies and you are still a self-hating, self-loathing, anti-black, black, white supremacist suffering from internalized racism and the disease of white supremacy, period. Because everything you just named off, you have equated with some type of superiority. Okay, your son plays hockey. He doesn't play basketball. So what? So since he plays hockey, that means he's better? Why? You, you don't put your money into white-owned businesses, but yet you pay a white-owned league for your son to play hockey in it. Think about that. You supposedly don't support white-owned businesses, but yet you pay a white-owned or martial arts studio or an Asian-owned martial arts studio for your son to go there. You know, it's it's really just an adapted, an adapted, a more twisted form of white supremacy. We are trained to think that anything white is better. So you have people that will even call themselves pro-black, call themselves down with the struggle, call themselves a part of the struggle that walk around blaming people that are trapped, literally trapped in the hood, trapped in oppressive situations, trapped by systems trapped by systems of institutionalized racism, trapped by systems of institutionalized poverty, trapped by systems that say that, you know, these kids have to go through the school to prison pipeline and say, well, I got out, so why can't you? One, you're the exception, you're not the rule. Far more black people are trapped in these systems just because you got out, that makes you the exception, not the rule. And two, these type of people don't, 
they're clinging on to this individualism, the same as white people, that these are individual incidents, that if those black people had done something different, if they weren't wearing weaves, if they weren't wearing Jordans, if they weren't living in the hood, if they pulled up their pants and respected themselves, if they did this, if they did that, then that wouldn't have happened to them. And the reason why they're clinging on to this so hard is because once they admit that it could happen to anyone just because they have black skin, that makes them a target. That makes their husbands, wives, sons, daughters, grandmothers, aunties, uncles. That makes all of them a target, and no one wants to feel like they're a target. They want to feel like, I'm doing something different, so it's not going to happen to me, and that's just not the way that it works. Right? So, you know, I'm going to read you some of it. I'm on the internet. I'm, on, I'm looking at it on my phone. You know, basically, I was like, listen... You have to wake up. Like, you have to wake up, right? You have to understand that nothing's going to save you. I was like, listen, there's nothing wrong with wearing weave. There's nothing wrong with wearing Jordans. There's nothing wrong with getting your nails done. How about weave is a billion-dollar business and every single weave shop in the hood should be black-owned? Every single nail shop in the hood should be black-owned. Every single sneaker shop in the hood, corner store, bodega, every single business in the hood should be black-owned. People could be walking around with the same exact shit that they're wearing now, doing the same exact shit that they're doing now, but if those businesses are black-owned, we're now circulating money in the black community instead of giving our money away to other races to take back to their communities, because half the time these people don't even live in our communities anyway. There's nothing inherently wrong with weave. There's nothing inherently wrong with nails. There's nothing inherently wrong with Jordans. So saying, well, I don't wear weave, and I don't wear Jordans, and I don't do this, and I don't do that, so I'm better than those people in the hood, so that's not going to happen to me... That, that makes you know better than white people. That makes you worse because you're black, so you should know better, right? And that's why you can't engage with these people. You can't give these people your energy. Hold on. Let me read this comment that she wrote. I basically was like, listen, you have to wake up. You're indoctrinated with ideals of white supremacy. You feel like you have all these things, and that makes you better than these people in the hood, and that means that you are not a target, and that somehow the people in the hood are to blame for their own misfortune, but that's just not the truth. That's just not how it goes. She goes, okay, so let me go live in the hood and I'll make sure my son has Jordans and can't speak English correctly because if he strives for an education, he clearly isn't black. Oh, and I will pull him out of all his activities because I wouldn't want him thinking blacks are just as well-rounded and diverse as anyone else. Oh, and let me burn all his black history books. I'm sure the hood will teach him what he needs to know. Okay, yeah, and then I will tell him forget about Malcolm, Dr. Huey P. Newton, and Stokely. Just follow Little Wayne and Young Thug. Yep, you got it. I replied, this comment alone tells me what you think of your fellow black person. So you think that all black people in the hood are dumb, uneducated, lazy, don't know how to speak, don't know education, don't know black history. You think that the people in the hood are inferior to you. And since you moved on up into the suburbs of Ferguson where you live around white people and you have your son enrolled in martial arts and hockey, like like that means something. Like the cop like the cops in Ferguson are gonna be like, Hey, do you play that nigger ball? Do you play that basketball? Oh no, you play hockey? Oh, so you a good darky, I'm not gonna shoot you. You think that all these things that you have are gonna save you. None of these things are gonna save you. No amount of money is gonna save you, no amount of education is gonna save you. nothing nothing you have a target on your back just like everybody else because you were born black period the end and those people in the hood those people in the hood that you're talking all this shit about those are the people that are fighting for you who have been the people leading these movements since ferguson since day one in ferguson the youth in the hood because guess what the motherfucking youth in the hood they don't have shit to lose they don't have anything to lose people keep saying oh the kids in baltimore are burning down their own community what is in that community nothing Baltimore is full of crackheads and abandoned buildings, okay? You guys have to look at the bigger picture. If they felt comfortable burning down shit in the neighborhood, the neighborhood clearly doesn't do shit for them or mean anything to them. They have no attachments to none of those buildings. They don't give a fuck about none of those buildings. That place looked like a war zone before they rioted and nobody gave a fuck. But now that they're fucking burning down mostly white-owned corporate businesses and establishments and property. And since we live in this capitalist, racist, white supremacist society where we place value on money, property, and goods over black life, now people are up in arms. What is a neighborhood? 
What is a community where you don't own anything, where you don't have anything, where the schools suck, where there's no grocery stores, where there's food deserts, where there's nothing, where you're trapped? Who gives a fuck? They don't give a fuck. That's why they lit that shit on fire. They don't care. They do not care. Why don't they care? Let's talk about that. Instead of talking about what they did, let's talk about why they did it. Why? Cause and effect. Why don't they care about their neighborhood? Why isn't there shit in their neighborhood to burn down but a fucking liquor store, a CVS, a 7-Eleven, and a check cashing place? And a church? Why isn't there shit else there? Let's talk about that. All those things are the result of systems. Systems. Systems that are in place to keep black people in poverty and disenfranchised in this com in this country. Wake up. I just started to say in this company because America is a fucking company. Did you guys know that you could enact violence against buildings? Did you know that? Did you know that? By law, you can, you can violence can be enacted against buildings. If you light a structure on fire, you, you can go watch CNN right now and they're saying that those are acts of violence. It wasn't an act of violence that killed Freddie Gray, though. But you can corporations are people and you can commit acts of violence against buildings. Wake up. Look at what we value and what we prioritize. Look at how we sit around and talk to each other on the internet. Oh, well, my son does this, 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 and this. He's not in the hood wearing Jordans and fucking... Well, I mean, he wouldn't wear weave, but, you know, Jordan's a weave and fake nail, so he's not a target. No, 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 boo-boo. He is a target, honey bunny. Just like the rest of us. How do you deal with coons? You don't deal with them. You don't engage with them. You can't. I said to this woman, you think everyone living in the hood is a stereotype. You're just as bad as white people. You're worse because you're black, so you should know better. Right? You don't have to pull your son out of the hood to make him a diverse well-rounded person which is what you literally just said when I was in the fourth grade I had a black fourth grade teacher I've had a, a lot of black teachers because when I was growing up in DC it was a majority black city and I had mostly black teachers when I was in the fourth grade my fourth grade teacher had a meeting with my mom she said listen I think your daughter is gifted I think your daughter's like a genius I think you should take her out of public school and put her in a private school a white school for like gifted kids my mom said why why would I do that? I want her to stay in her school with her friends, her black friends, with her teachers, where she's comfortable around around people like her that look like her. And I stayed in DCPS my whole life. Elementary school, middle school, high school, I went through DCPS. Okay? White white shit is not better. It's, and, and, and it's not y'all fault. It's not your fault because you grew up indoctrinated you know, with this this Eurocentric school systems and just learning learning all this inherent, you know, internalized white supremacy shit where you think like, oh, if my child plays hockey and not basketball, he'll be better. No, no, no. But there's no, especially coons that have reached a certain age, there's no changing their minds. There's no talking to them. There's no unplugging them from the matrix. We can't unplug people from the matrix once they reach a certain age because the mind cannot adapt, okay? Please go watch the matrix. For for those of y'all that don't know, the matrix was actually written by, it was ghost written by a black woman. And she was talking about some real ass shit. Please go watch the matrix again from that perspective of knowing that it was ghost written by a black woman and consider race when you're watching the matrix because that's how it is. You know, when he, when they take Neo through the matrix and they're and they take him through the agent program, because the agents can basically jump inside anyone. They can be anyone that's plugged into the system. He goes, you know, we're working for a revolution. We're working to free these minds. But we have to always remember that if they're not unplugged, if they're not one of us, they're one of them. And until then, that makes them a threat. And that's how I feel about these coons. They're sleeper cells. They're agents of white supremacy. Don't even engage with them until they wake up, until they unplug. All you can do is your work. Do your work. And hope that they catch on and hope that they wake up. In preparation for this video, I listened. Before I even got in the conversation with the lady this morning. So it was really kismet. It was really the universe. I was re-listening to my to that Toni Morrison speech at Portland University. Which I will link again so that everybody can listen to it. Because everyone should listen to it, you know. She's basically saying the same thing. You know, do your work. The very serious function of racism. This is racism from white people as well as internalized anti-blackness from other black people, coons. The very serious function of racism is distraction. It keeps you from doing your work. It keeps you explaining over and over again why you are here, right? 
None of that is necessary. There will always be one more thing. Oh, well, black people this, black people that, black people this, black, black, on, black on black crime. Black people don't fucking respect themselves. They wear Jordans. They wear weave. Like, it's something inherently wrong with Jordans and weave. White people wear Jordans and weave, too. The difference is they own the shops. Okay? But I'm calm. I'm calm. You know? She goes, you know, I refuse to be distracted from who I am. And what my life is about. Toni Morrison said this in 1975. Please listen to these words. I refuse to be distracted from who I am and what my life is about. The media is of no consequence. Other people are of no consequence. The media does not initiate and it does not create. It can only either enlighten or distort. What we accomplish is in spite of the media and in spite of its control. You can learn from me. And this especially goes for white people or non-blacks that watch my videos. You can learn from me, but I am not speaking to you. I am specifically speaking to black people. I am explaining something to them. My work is about them and to them. It is a very private thing, right? That's all you can do is your work period. People are either going to catch on or they're not. Engaging in these long conversations and these arguments, you're just expending energy that could be used doing something else. I said to this woman in the IG comments, you know, you feel that way about the hood. I was like, but with all those bad feelings, you could move to the hood yourself and you could enact change. You think people in the hood are not educated about black history? You have all these degrees in African studies in the diaspora. How about you move to the hood and you start teaching the youth instead of moving away taking your resources, taking your husband and taking your son and enrolling him in these white schools that you feel are better. How about you give some of your resources back to the hood? Oh, no, 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 I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. And Toni Morrison, in her speech in 1975, has a passage on that too. I'm responsible for my children. I would not bus my children to another school. I would rather gather the local parents in the neighborhood and improve the quality of my school and my neighborhood. She says, I would never bus my children 200 miles to a white school. Why would I do that? We have a school. Our children and our communities are our responsibility. Stop taking your resources out and running away. Stop it. Stop. Stop. It is not our job to educate our conqueror. And even if it was, I'm still quoting here. The best way to do that is not to explain anything to them, but to keep ourselves strong. I'm going to say that again because this is for white people. This is for coons. This is for anybody that's trying to distract you. It is not our job to educate our conqueror. And even if it was, the best way to do that is not to explain anything to him, but to keep ourselves strong. If you're talking to a coon and they don't understand what you're saying, they don't understand why you're saying invest in your community, they don't understand why you're saying you know, group economics, they don't understand why you're saying stop taking your resources and running to white people, fuck them. Fuck them, girl. Fuck them. Fuck them, girl. Fuck them. Don't talk to them. Don't engage with them. Don't give them any energy. Do your work. Do your work. Educate yourself. Keep your mind strong. Find businesses to do, to, um, shit, I'm, I'm seeing my mind is running ahead. Find businesses to fucking patronize. You know, whatever your work is, if, you know, find like-minded people that you can build with. You know, protest if you want to protest. Travel around, I don't want to say spreading the word because that sounds really religious, but, you know, be with like-minded people and keep yourself strong. All coons and white people want to do is tear you down and, and indoctrinate you with white supremacy because if they're not one of us, they're one of them, like in the Matrix. As long as the mind is not unplugged, they're... There is not shit you can do until they're ready. Listen to the Toni Morrison lecture and stop engaging with coons and stop engaging with, with white people. They're not going to hear you. They're not going to hear you. I saw on Tumblr trying to explain privilege and racism to white people is like trying to explain the concept of bacteria to someone without a microscope. Right? Bacteria is all around us. Cells, atoms, you know, all that shit. But you can't see it without a microscope. Right? Like, it's exactly that. Keep yourself strong and do your work. And stop wasting and expending time and energy on these people. It's just a bunch of chatter and it's just going to make you weak. So don't do it. 
So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's long, but I feel like it's really, really important. Um, you can ple please listen to the Toni Morrison lecture and read the conversation that I had on Instagram because I feel like it's really important. Um, and also, just so you guys know, I also started a Patreon as well as a GoFundMe. There are I'll post links, I guess, in the description box. But there's also links on the home um, channel on my YouTube page because people kept saying, oh, they want to help and they want to donate and this and that. So I did start that. But of course, no pressure because I don't do this for money. I do it for you guys. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Food for thought as always. Don't engage with coons. Don't engage with them. Keep yourself strong. Peace.